Hi, everybody. Welcome to our channel, Our Scientology Stories, Peeling the Onion. My name is Mark Fisher, and I want to welcome you to this short video. I wanted to call attention to it because last night I was on a group video with uh, four people, uh, actually three people and me. I was the fourth person. But anyway, it was with Karen De La Carriere, her husband, Jeffrey Augustine, and Mitch Brisker, who was the former uh, Scientology professional director who directed a lot of the, all the tech films and public films for Scientology, and also worked directly with, uh, sorry, with David Miscavige for 27 years until 2017, 2018 in that time period. Anyway, Mitch Brisker was very close having worked with Miscavige for many years. And of course, I used to work for Miscavige for six years from the late early 1980s up until September 15th, 1990, when I left. Uh, we were doing a discussion about suppressive people and the uh, SP policies of the Church of Scientology. And it was a really good uh, discussion. It goes on for an hour and 10, hour and 15 minutes. But I then posed a question that I had been wondering about David Miscavige. And it had to do with how long does he really have left uh, I noted that, you know, he was born with asthma. He's had asthma his entire life. Uh, he smokes two packs of Camel cigarettes a day. Uh, he chews tobacco, he smokes cigars, and he drinks whiskey. So I wanted to ask Mitch his opinion because he'd been the only person in our group who had been with Miscavige most recently, and also Jeff and Karen for their opinions. And what Mitch told us was actually pretty eye-opening to me. It's not something I'd ever heard before. So I want to play that little section. It's, it's very short in this video for you. And then I'll comment on it afterwards. So bear with me while I add this uh, here and I'll start playing it. Okay. okay. So anyway, I want to ask sure. you both. I want to ask you all a question, okay? This is some, speaking of eternity. All right. I've been yeah. pontificating and thinking about this lately. I did a video a couple of weeks ago on this, right? David Miscavige is 63 years old. I've had friends who are in the Sea Organization who have died at the age of 65 and 66 who are in relatively good health. Okay. Now David and he's a, hey, he's a smoker with asthma. Well, hold on. I'm just gonna I'm okay. just gonna run it down. Number one, he has asthma. He smoked two packs a day of unfiltered camels when I worked for him. And I was going to ask you, Mitch, to fill in if that continued. Because he oh, yeah. not only did that, he used, to, he used to chew tobacco, skull bandits. He, he had them in his, he had a spittoon. This is early Ooh. in the 80s. Now, I, I don't remember him continuing doing that, but he did it for That's a long disgusting. time. Then he got into oh, smoking God. cigars with Tom Cruise right before I left. Right. right? And then I've heard that. He drinks scotch that uh, mm -hmm. Tom DeVox said, sometimes a bottle a night, right? Mm -hmm. And then also I've heard from Mark Headley that he takes human growth hormone, or he did for a time being, okay? Yeah, so and he also question, sleep, my, he, he also sleeps in one of those bariatric chambers. Oh, I does he? That. that was what I was going to really? ask you. What, yeah. Michael Jackson. Like Michael Jackson? Jackson? Yeah, he's got one of those. But they have two of them at gold. They, they bought two of them. They have a gold, and they use them to treat... They use them. Uh, the last time I ran into Heber Judge, it's like, okay, I was in all kinds of trouble. I got sent back to Golden. I was trying to figure a way to get the hell out of there and, and you know, maintain my finances and my dignity. And I was not able to do that. Uh, but anyway, that's another story. So they, they said, because I was having some physical difficulties or whatever, that in the morning, instead of going to course, I could go, or for an hour, I could go to the MLO space, which they set up in the apartment medical building. liaison office yeah the, yeah the medical the quote-unquote quack medical people yeah your dog totally agrees 100 percent. so okay so you can go down they'd set up one of the they set up two of these bariatric things in the you know in the uh the the, the apartments right the, the medical people had taken over part of it and so i could go to but and they kept saying you know you, you should do this it'll be really good for you I wouldn't do it because I just didn't like laying in it, but I. So that's what he was doing. He actually had, uh, we actually had the wrong word. We said bariatic uh, chamber, but it's actually a hyperbaric oxygen therapy chamber. Mm 
and uh, uh, one of our listeners corrected us in the chat. But I knew exactly what he was talking about at the time. And uh, let me show you a little bit of information regarding it. Michael Jackson, okay, Michael Jackson in the mid-1980s, he had one of these hyperbaric oxygen chambers, and he would sleep in it, okay? And he believed that it was going to uh, extend his life to 150 years old, okay? He basically thought, oh, this is going to, you know, good for me, the oxygen and all that, and it's going to make me live longer, right? And that's a newspaper article from the time uh, when that came out. Here's a better picture of Michael Jackson inside the hyperbaric oxygen therapy uh chamber that he had. And it almost looks like a coffin and uh, you're in there. Let me read to you a little bit about what a hyperbaric chamber oxygen therapy is. And I'm going to share my screen here on this. So just bear with me for one second. Okay, here we go. All right, this is from the Mayo Clinic. All right. And this is uh, basically describes what hyperbaric oxygen therapy is. And so overview, hyperbaric oxygen therapy involves breathing pure oxygen in a pressurized environment. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy is a well-established treatment for decompression sickness, a potential risk of scuba diving. Other conditions treated with hyperbaric oxygen therapy include serious infections, bubbles of air in blood vessels, wounds that may not heal because of diabetes or radiation injury. In a hyperbaric chamber, oxygen therapy chamber, the air pressure is increased to two to three times higher than normal air pressure. Under these conditions, your lungs can gather much more oxygen than would be possible breathing pure oxygen at normal air pressure. This extra oxygen helps fight bacteria. It also triggers the release of substances called growth factors and stem cells, which promote healing. Okay, so that's from the Mayo Clinic in terms of what this hyperbaric oxygen chamber does. It's also used for burn victims, people who have serious burns. It helps them to heal. So there's definitely a practical application for this in the medical community, right? But David Miscavige has taken it upon himself several years ago to buy two of these machines, and they go anywhere from Fifteen to twenty-five thousand dollars a piece, right? And he used Scientology money that was donated by parishioners in order to have these chambers. Why would he want these chambers? Okay, obviously he thinks it's going to improve his health and actually extend his life. Okay, he's looking for that fountain of youth. Mitch goes on to tell us about other things and other therapies that Miscavige was go had had been going through, including including colonics. Okay, he said that when he felt sick, that uh, Miscavige's assistant told him, "Oh, you should get colonics. That's what Dave does, and 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 in order to clean yourself out, right?" Well, that's an alternative therapy, but it's not what L. Ron Hubbard says to do, and it's not what Scientology would actually do. The other thing, then he went into LED, red LED light therapy, and he also got involved with drinking wheatgrass and other, other types of uh, juicing and all that. That's all nutritious and that's all fine, right? So he, he can do those sort of things, right? But the, the issue really is David Miscavige smokes two packs of Camel cigarettes unfiltered a day. He used to have chewing tobacco between his cheek and gum. He smokes cigars and drinks whiskey, okay? All of this stuff, very addictive behavior, but it's also very damaging to your health. He's 63 years old. He has asthma. He probably was terrified of COVID, all right? And he, ha he had the orgs locked down forever because of COVID. And it actually probably would have been very, very, traumatic for him if he actually had caught uh, the COVID uh, infection. But anyway, he's doing all these alternate things like hyperbaric chambers and, and all that other stuff. Dave, just quit smoking, okay? Just stop. Quit smoking. People do it every day. And I got a couple other things you should quit. Stop smoking cigars. Stop drinking whiskey. If you want to live a long life, cut those things out, and it's definitely going to help you. 
All right. I got a third thing. Your stress level is always out the roof. You're a type A personality. You blow your stack at the drop of a hat. Okay. And I can tell you right now, most doctors will tell you lowering your stress level is going to improve your overall health. All right. Not sitting in some chamber that's not made for the type of usage that you are using it for. It doesn't extend your life. It's for curing people with burns, all right, and other wounds, just like I said that the Mayo Clinic talks about, all right? So, Dave, hey, get with it, okay? Just do the common sense things to do. Quit smoking. Quit drinking, all right? You'll feel a lot better, and maybe, maybe you'll extend your life, but I doubt it very seriously, you'll listen to me. And I doubt very seriously, you're going to lower your stress level because you are on the run, my friend. You have process servers after you and you're being investigated. And I guarantee you, your stress level is going up daily. The other solution would be walk away, go, go find a, a secluded island and live over there and turn over the reins and, and get, get out of there and stop your abusive behavior. That would be a great way to lower your stress and extend your life. This is what David Miscavige looks like in the most recent uh, photograph, right? He's completely vain, obviously. He, he tans. That's the other thing. He should stop using a tanning bed. You can get skin cancer from that, Dave. Uh, he also, as you can tell in this photograph, he's, he's made up. He spends $10,000 to have a makeup artist and another $10,000 to have somebody do his hair, a Hollywood hairdresser, which, by the way, are hair plugs. All right. He'd be bald as a cue ball if it wasn't for the hair plugs that he has. All right. So he's obviously very vain and he wants to extend his life. Right. And we actually joked on the video that, hey, the next thing you know, he's going to be looking into uh, what's the freezing, the chirogenics or whatever, where they freeze your body or freeze your head so that maybe in the future they can bring you back. Or even more so, they could actually take a DNA sample and they can actually take it to every one of those underground vaults that you have for the end of the world and just place your DNA in there so that maybe in the future they can bring you back if that's what you believe. The other thing that's really a farcical about this is that Scientology believes that you are not your body. You are a spiritual being. You are not your body. They believe that you live many lifetimes, that your body is just a vessel in this lifetime, right? If you abuse it, guess what? Tough luck on to the next lifetime. That's the way Scientology views it. But of course, We've not seen no proof of that. Hubbard died in 1986, said he'd be back in 20 years, and nobody has had any sighting of L. Ron Hubbard. So it's a bunch of BS is really what it's all about. But I think Miscavige is trying all these different things to basically extend his life because he likes being in control. It's all about him, and that's really what it's all about, not about helping people, not about the expansion of Scientology or anything like that. Anyway, if you would, you can see the complete video here, Scientology Suppressive People Policies with Karen, Jeffrey, Mitch, and Mark. And we actually go into more detail on the subject that I just told you about, okay, where uh, Mitch basically states his opinion on what he thinks Miscavige's endgame is and what he's trying to do uh, going forward in the future. We also talk about suppressive person policies. And Jeffrey Augustine has a great, great idea for everybody who's left Scientology, something they should do to protect themselves from future lawsuits or any entanglements they have with Scientology, even though they're no longer in Scientology. Uh, there'll be more of this. We're going to do more videos regarding what Jeff suggested. But if you want to get a heads up on it, go ahead and watch this video. It's on my channel, Scientology Suppressive People policies with Karen, Jeffrey, Mitch, and Mark. And I'll also have put a link up here at the end. So all you have to do is click on it and you can watch the whole thing. I think you'll find it very informative and uh, very entertaining. And I hope you enjoy it. That's what I have for you all. Uh, please, if you like this video or any of our videos, would you please subscribe to our channel, Our Scientology Stories, Peeling the Onion, and that's at Mark Fisher and Janice Gillum Grady here on YouTube. We appreciate the support. Also, hit that like button. When you hit the like button, 
it's not to let us know that you like it. It's to let the YouTube algorithm know. So they'll push it out to people who have never seen the videos before. And maybe they'll get some information and avoid getting involved with Scientology or become part of our channel so that they can learn more and also help more. So anyway, hit that like button. Please subscribe to the channel and also hit the notification button so that you can see uh, when we are actually uh, putting up a new video. And then finally, if you feel like donating to me, you can buy me a coffee. Just go down in the description of this video and there's a link there where you can buy me a coffee. Uh, it's, it's, it's better than doing a super chat or super sticker because uh, YouTube takes 30% of that. Uh, whereas if you buy me a coffee, they only take 5%. So we actually end up getting more money. And uh, believe it or not, it costs money to do these videos and to put them out there for you and, and to provide this information. So any donations via buy me a coffee are greatly appreciated. Anyway, that's the end of this video. Uh, please, if you would, watch the complete video with Karen, Jeffrey, Mitch, and I. And until the next time, bye-bye. <laughs>